viewers, thank you for joining us. Today we are in a celebrative mood as we celebrate the third anniversary of the Label TV. Label TV, a Pan-African bilingual television channel, was inaugurated on the 14th August 2017 by the president, by the governor's president, Ali Bongo Ondimba. The station is owned by a renowned media practitioner, Mr. Magda Silla. With me is uh, Silela Neyman in the English desk. We are going to talk with Mr. Sila about the celebrations of Label TV at the three years. Uh, Mr. Sila, you are welcome. Thank you very much for your invitation. Thank you. Uh, Label TV is celebrating three years of existence today. How will you describe the last three years? It has been three years of efforts of trying to build up what we can post refer as a startup, but a very innovative um, initiative. Um, trying to gather people from various African countries around a concept that can beam and target all African countries and even beyond, because we are both Pan-African and international trying to position ourselves as the leading media in terms of satellite coverage all over the continent, even reaching the Latin American coast, part of the Middle East, Europe, as we are in France at our number 204 channel, trying to have a 100% African content, even in terms of news, of whatever, trying to change the paradigm all over in terms of the way we Africans do radio and television. Because most of the time so far we have been consumers trying to put those types of telenovelas coming from all over the world, not being able to tell our own stories, have our own narratives, and uh, doing it from the guy I am from Sahel coming into Central Africa, Equatorial Forest and trying to build up all this together and show that we Africans can do the same things with the same technologies but with our own content. So it has been a challenge on all aspects in terms of vision, in terms of shared values, in terms of production, in terms of management and in terms of financial survival. So but thanks to God we are here, not celebrating as such, but I think it's a landmark, and sometimes in life you need to have some landmarks so as to pave the way and show the next steps. So thank you to all of you. You are part of the game. You are part of the uh, story. And whatever vision I may have, whatever means I may have, it has to be implemented by human beings, by people who believe in what you are doing. We are people who share the same vision, the same values, and who believe really in Africa, our continent. Aujourd'hui, les opérateurs tous confondus de satellites, de programmes, de contenu, dont Star Times, le chinois qui aujourd'hui engrange 4 millions de foyers, sont sur le continent. Ça veut dire quoi Ça veut dire que nous sommes dans un continent attractif. Dans Ça veut dire qu'aujourd'hui, la communication en Afrique, de par ses contenus, doit pouvoir être une terre de prédilection, non seulement pour les communicants et les organisations africaines en tant que telles, mais pour l'ensemble de la planète. Mr. Sila, you, uh, you created Label TV, an African channel. Um, as many know, you've been at the head of several other channels uh, in Senegal, in Cameroon, and even in France. What inspired you or what motivated you to create a Pan-African channel? Uh, you, put the, you put it the right way. You mentioned a number of things in terms of background. All these experiences have convinced me that uh, we Africans mm -hmm. have a great part and great role to play worldwide in all fields. Most people are now saying that Africa is the next continent for the next generation, the next century. Here and now, I think that Africa, and even years back, mm -hmm. 
Africa has a lot to provide, to put on the table. And through all these experiences, I thought that we had a very, very tiny part. And this is why years back, I wrote, I think it was in 1994, a book called The Outlaw of the Planetary Village. Mm -hmm. And the subtitle was Africa at the Age of Global Television. Okay. So I believed through my experience, through people I met, that somebody has to take the risk, the initiative to try and federate and put together all these African talents around a project that can consolidate, that can build, and that can show what Africans can do together in terms of environment, of economics, of politics, of society, of sports, of music, of whatever, and given opportunities to young people. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, what I did and wherever I did it, I have taken some senior people, but almost 90 to 80 to 90 percent of people I take are junior people who have never even had any experience in terms of media or whatever. And I think this is what happened to me when I started my career, and this is what we need to do okay. to match and catch up with one reality, which is that 77 percent of the African continent are used below 35 years. Mm -hmm. We cannot continue senior people like me, even if I do not look like a young boy. <laughs> Very young. <laughs> <laughs> that we cannot continue to be those giving lessons, those doing programs, whatever. We can do our part. Mm -hmm. We can show the way. And this is, it is a mix of all these types of things, encounters, experiences, ambitions that I have for our continent that made me believe that I should be doing it. I came into this country mm -hmm. where I have been uh, a close um, collaborator of the head of state mm -hmm. since we did the strategic plan of Gabon, emerging Gabon. And one of the aspects in this plan was to build a multimedia group. It has been one of the very first decisions that have been taken by the cabinet meeting since he came into power. And in 2012, we went to Yokohama in Japan, mm -hmm. and we were going to the conference, and I told him, Mr. President, this has been decided three years back, but as of now, nothing has been done. Can you allow me to try and do something? And I came back, and I see your director, Mr. Adande, I told him, you know, this piece of land I built, I will no longer put a, my own personal residence. I will put a television channel, radio and television channel. This is how the story began in 2012. And we tried to build it. You can have maybe pictures of what have been done. Many mm -hmm. people were here, like Julie, others, Bill. And it had given what we have seen now. So I really believe that we Africans need to have tools in a world where domination is no longer a matter of weapons. The new weapons now are through media, because through media you can structure, you can alienate, you can direct, mm -hmm. and you can convince or do whatever with media. Most people, like Western people, Western countries, have completely understood that this is the way and we Africans need to also understand that this is the way forward. So this is, it's a mix of all this that told me, okay, you, given your background, the people you have met, your network, I have the responsibility mm -hmm. to try and start something. And this is what I did, and thanks to God, until now we have been up, whatever difficulties and hardships we are going through. And this is why also we need to be uh, supported. Mm -hmm. Because what I'm doing is not something, I mean, personal in terms of gains or whatever. It's personal in terms of ambitions. Mm -hmm. It's personal in terms of vision. It's personal in terms of what I want to do. So just to show that, you know, we talk about African unity, whatever. Everybody at his single and unique place has to do what he has to do to make it something real something visible and this is what I'm trying to inspiration is really motivating and uh, all this cannot come without challenges what do you think are your biggest challenges on this 
our biggest challenge is to, to survive. It's survival. Once you have built such a building, once you have put such equipment, which is up to the art equipment, what we have, any other international channel, maybe most, most of them, even some of them don't have what we have. Some people, when they come into this, of this building, when they visit, when they go out, they think that they are not in Africa. <laughs> yeah, you have seen it. So which means that once this is done, once we have got the people around, we can get more people, mm -hmm. we can get more talents. The real challenge is how do we do to survive? I think Mr. Silla did what he could do, even more than what he could do, but he needs to be supported. Not to take money to put it in his pocket, go and buy big cars. You know, all of you know <laughs> that I'm not in this you know, <laughs> angle. But I need it to get better talents, to put you in better conditions, to get more productions, and to fulfill our common vision and mission. So the big challenge is survival, especially in this period of COVID, where many, many, many companies are going down, restructuring, laying down people, closing. And I think that we Africans need to have our champions in all fields, not even only economic, industrial, whatever, but in the media landscape. We Africans need to have champions that can relay the African image that can brand the African continent, as we say, branding Africa. Because, you know, economic development cannot be achieved without strong media. Yes, as, as you rightly mentioned, the challenges of COVID-19 and, and the water, I think last month uh, there were this kind of uneasiness that uh, Label TV might close down, and eventually here we are. We never said that we will close down. We said we will restructure downsize because we must be realistic i cannot put what i don't have in this company for three years i've been sustaining even before because it needed some i told you 2012 to build this get the equipment everything it's not just the three years it started way beyond it comes to a point where you have no support nobody is coming putting any money here you have to be realistic I say, I'm downsizing. I'm doing some cuts. Maybe some people can be laid out, whatever, but we are still there, thanks to God. No one can decide of the future of Label TV. Only God, the Almighty. And he's showing us that it's the only Almighty in this period we are all going through. And that's it. I do believe we may be even celebrating the 30 years <laughs> and uh, with uh, an old man will be coming here. <laughs> yeah. That'd be great. That would be wonderful. Yes, uh, Mr. Silla, you talk about media as a new weapon. How would you look at the development of media in Africa? You know, it's something that is really very, some kind of contradiction. When most, I mean, leaders in Africa, especially politicians, when they want to go to campaign, to canvass, they come, they talk in our local languages, they use the media, the local media, whatever, because they need it at this very precise moment. Once this is done, most of the time they forget about the media, about the necessary means that have to be given to them. When I say the media, public and private, both of them. As I'm telling you, you know, why do you think that Western countries, Asian countries, whatever, why do you think that they are bringing their channels all over the African continent? How many channels can you count in those digital platforms now in our continent? Hundreds and hundreds of channels. Even sometimes in our local languages. The Chinese do channels in our languages. The Europeans do channels in our languages. Why? Because Africa is a continent of opportunities. But what are we doing in terms of policy? for cultural policy, communication policy, media policy, to sustain those business and help emerge African champions in the media field. This is a contradiction in Africa. And at the same time, where they are not putting monies in our local structures, they put lots of money in international magazines, TV channels, whatever. I don't want to mention any channels or any, I mean, announcer, mm -hmm. but you can see. 
Of course. They are ready to do it. 95% of the budget which counts into billions in Africa in terms of advertising go out of the continent to foreign structures, investors, etc. Is this right? No, I think no. no. Of course, the, 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 the channel is still very young. Mm -hmm. And as you said, the channel still has a long way to go. Mm -hmm. Would you say you are satisfied with what you've achieved so far with Label TV? Would you say you've been true to the vision that you first had? Yeah, definitely. I'm very proud of what I've been doing, not for myself. Mm -hmm. I'm proud for Africa, for you guys, for everybody who has put even one day of ease or earth sweat in this venture. Mm -hmm. Because it was just obvious, you know, saying, okay, we want to position ourselves as a leading channel in terms of satellite coverage in the continent. Was it right that no African channels could claim to be the one which is covering the whole of the continent? We are on six satellites. It's a lot of money. It's a vision, but it, has, it was something, it was a must that we can say that the channel which covers best the continent is an African channel. We have a number of nationalities. Mm -hmm. Gabonese, Nigerian, Senegal by origin, Gabonese, we have Ivorians, Burkina Bay, Benin, Ivory, Cote d'Ivoire, whatever. Mm -hmm. This also was a challenge that was made. Every single year in this building, which is up to date, as I can say, with no pretension, has been done by Africans. No one else did even put a stone here or a cable. It has been done by Africans. This is a motif, some kind of source of satisfaction. In terms of content, have you seen telenovelas from Brazil or Mexico or whatever in our channel or whatever Western films? No. Whatever we put on air is done by Africans or is about Africa. We claim to do 100% African content. Who else does it in the world? We are the only African channel in the digital territory TNT France in France. We can even go to Spain, Italy, whatever. With the satellite we are using, we can go to 6 million households in Europe, directly with small dishes. All these, I think, are sources of satisfaction. Of course. We are up, running, whatever difficulties. Many people would not believe that we will be up until now. But we are up, thanks to God. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Silla, when we look at this uh, uh, achievement, when we look at the content mm -hmm. of the uh, label TV, which is Pan-African, how often do you reach out to the head of state to, the, uh, to tell them that this is our own, we can be proud, partner with us, advertise with us, let's do business together? Yeah, the end of states are important, definitely, because they see, yeah, okay, it is starting from here. You know, this building, we are in a studio where this uh, project was inaugurated. This compound is called Nelson Mandela. When you go all around, this studio we are in is called Ajoma Bongo on Dimba. The next one is Asan De, Asan <laughs> from Morocco. You have got Daniel Kaberuka, you've got uh, Folorunja Alakija. I've never met her. She's from Nigeria. They said she's <laughs> very, very rich. Many people think that That's I put the name because she is rich. I do not, I have never seen her. I did not even know. I just have seen pictures. But and this I said, is what you're sure. supposed to let them know. But I think it's not only my job. It's the job of all of you, of all people who are viewing, not only of head of states, of ministers, of whatever, of everybody who thinks that this is a good project that has to be sustained and supported. I'm trying to do my part the best way I can. But it's not only my job, because what I have done, and this has to be really known, do you think that I'm doing this project for myself? No, if I true. sell this building, I can go and sit up to the end of my days, and even my grandsons. It's to give opportunities to us Africans. It's because of a vision, it's because of ambitions that I have for our continent, which has to tell its own stories. When you were given a prize at the uh, center, there was it one was of the prizes Paris, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. you received. The, the, the MC who spoke on that occasion mm -hmm. really admired how you trained young people. But it is very difficult to see this kind of uh, uh, legacy uh, from others. Yeah, everybody, you know, in life, everybody has to play his role or her role. And uh, 
You know, I, I talked on this occasion about generosity. Generosity, it's uh, just not only a thing of money. It's uh, efforts, it's sharing what you have. You cannot decide, okay, I want to be generous. You can decide and you can, it may happen that you are not generous. I think generosity is something that God puts on you. Your education, your parents, it's just because you are just like that. Many people think I am foolish to have invested so much. Some Europeans came here when we are doing this building. And they say, How can you put so much money here in this country, in this type of things? Because I believe in Africa. Because I believe in the potential. Because I think that given the way and the background I have, I have a mission to sustain this industry and this business and to sustain the young Africans and give them opportunities, whatever nationality. I don't have a problem of nationality. I believe in Africa. I've been opportune to look at the content of Label TV. Did, has it ever occurred to you to censor what comes into uh, Label TV? To censor? Yeah, yeah to censor. To I have, sense, have, have I censored you? I've been here. No, no, I, have, I have censored you just once. No, not no, at all. No, no, I think you are the best people to tell. <laughs> Have you seen me coming into this, uh, your editorial room and say, don't put this, don't put that, don't put that? No, I contribute daily to your new thing. But I have never seen you put this by force, never. I just contribute like any other journalist every day. The only thing I'm doing and maybe censoring is the scroll you are seeing every day. I'm the one doing it every day, wherever I am in the world. Also, this I'm doing it also to keep in pace and in harmony with what I think that we have to brand the African continent. There are things that we have to put a certain way. Not just take whatever comes into this international press agencies and just put it concerning Africa. I rewrite it and put it my own way. Apart from that, which is self-censorship, <laughs> I have never censored anyone here. Nobody in this company can come and tell that I came once and said, don't lose it, don't do that. Because I think we have people who are responsible, who are professional, and whoever disagrees with whatever we are putting or saying can come and express his or her own opinion. Label TV is quite popular now mm. among the, the African population mm. and the African diaspora. Mm. What, what are your expectations or what, the, what should the viewer expect for the future? Maybe partnerships, maybe collaborations? Yeah, yeah, we will do, definitely. There are ways, you know, but most of the time when you say what you want to do, Many people will take some kind of advance <laughs> and try and go and, and, and duplicate what you are doing. Of course. And as you said, you know, we, yeah, I, we are also be at some kind of training school and platform. Many people who are in other channels, whatever, came from here. So, you know, it's, um, how can I put it? Um, we are, want to do a lot of things. You will see in the next few days that sports will have more consistency. Because I've signed agreements with some kind of partners. Because, you know, when you have a network and people have respect for you, you can get things maybe sometimes more easily. And, you know, in this perspective, we, have, uh, we will be having more sports. You will see announcements will be made. In terms of youth, young people, whatever, we'll have more content, more dedicated content about African tales and a number of things that are underground. And also in terms of uh, production and even delocalizing a little bit. As I say, from Senegal, Cameroon. Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Benin, very certainly with my friend of Golf TV, whatever. Mm -hmm. And even in Mauritius, we had some kind of strategic uh, alliances that we want to build up. Mm -hmm. So that in terms of content, really, is people will see new things, new ways of doing it. And even to just give an example, even this type of material. Mm -hmm. In many African can can uh, countries and channels, it was forbidden years back. Oh. Uh, yeah. And even now in Western television, you can see most of them, they use this type of thing, doing it or wearing it. And I think we have been a pioneer in that field. We'll be pioneering if, inshallah, a number of other things and perspective and give opportunities, not only to audiences, mm -hmm. but to uh, economic operators, to states, to African people, to young people, so that we are in line with our mission, with our vision, and our values. Let's talk about the role of media in political development in Africa, very briefly. Yeah, definitely. I think we have a very major role to play. It all depends, you know. I do not believe in uh, like uh, what they call the Radio de Mille Colin or TV de Mille Colin, which really <laughs> just bring trouble in our countries. <laughs> because when there are trouble in any countries, the first place people go to is radio and television, in yes. the major houses. Of course, yes. So we have 
to be the supporters, number one supporters of peace in our countries and development. But development how? Development is not being the voice of the master. When there is a problem somewhere, we can go and do an investigation, show things, give you know, the floor to all parties involved, come up to the solution and come up to proposals. As you see, the way we have built even our, you know, our news buildings, whatever. Yes. It's not only politics, it's economics, it's environment, it's society, it's uh, elf, it's, it's um, culture. Mm, culture, environment. We need to tackle all these fields, all these areas to bring some kind of new light. And the fact that what we are Pan-African can make us and make even leaders to do some kind of benchmarking, mm -hmm. see best practices, see what people are doing in other countries. Just to give one more example, when I was coming back after months being stuck <laughs> due to the COVID, when you come to um, Leon Bay International Airport, they will ask you, oh, okay, Mr. Sela, very fine, okay, you have your, okay, very fine, your certificate, okay. But Mr. Sela, you have to go there into this cabin and do a new test. And they say, why? I did my test 20 yeah. No, Mr. Sela, you know, you did it 20, 72 hours before. But you mm. took the plane, you went to the airport, you did a stopover, you know, you know, in 22 hours, you know, this, it's very contagious, you know. Twice is better than once. Just come and do it again. <laughs> and, the guy, and, and the doctor is there. He does it a really a very gentle way, very... And I say, okay, it's, he's right. I did it, okay, so he's right. Okay, let me do it. You did it, okay, they take your number, they take the family number, whatever. Okay, they say, okay, we will keep in touch. And two, three days after, if there is nothing, Okay, you can go and do your own things and your own activities. <laughs> and I think this thing has to be shown to other African countries. It can help. So, you know, there are lots of things that we can do even without giving lessons, but by the examples, by showing what other people are doing. And even in terms of African integration, because many people, every African thinks that his country is the best. Yeah, the best, what we do, whatever. Sometimes they think that they have the best, the, the nicest cities, they have the clever people, but when you go around and they can see that what other people are doing in terms of innovation, of environment, of whatever, everything becomes very relative and realistic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think this is also one of the mission of the media in terms of helping the development of the African continent and branding the image of Africa. We are gradually coming to the end of the program and we cannot conclude. I want to ask this question. Who is Mr. Magda Sile? <laughs> you, 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 you guys have to find out and tell the story. I cannot tell the story myself. What I can say, I'm a Pan-African. I am a very hard worker. I believe in generosity. I am very positive. And I just pray God to give us the strength, all of us, to do what we want to achieve for our continent. Thank you, Mr. Silla, for coming. Thank you, Mr. Silla. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, viewers, that brings us to the end of the third anniversary of the Label TV. You have heard it all from the founder and the president and chief executive of Label TV, a Pan-African bilingual television station right here in Libreville, Capon. Come, let's join hands together and build this noble objective. Thank you. I will see you again. Bye.